please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, board members and members of the audience. First item on our agenda is the adoption of the agenda. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion on our agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. First item on our agenda is honors, awards, and recognitions. And I believe at this time we're going to turn this over to Mr. Walt Shannon, and Walt is going to lead us to this item on our agenda. We have seniors of the month and the governor's awards to school. Our first recognition is for our Senior of the Month program, and at this time we'll recognize uh, Dr. Lois Graham, who will introduce our Senior of the Month program. Good evening. A very special highlight of our board meeting is the recognition of the Senior of the Month from each of the four high schools. Photos and leadership profiles are displayed on the presentation boards in the lobby. Our presentation format provides a snapshot, snapshot of each senior in their own words of how they view themselves. Their comments are always informative, insightful, and enjoyable. Now it's my pleasure to present Carl Pauley, who will do the first presentation from Prince, he's principal of Auburn High School, followed by Brian Kitts, principal of Blacksburg High School, then Dr. Kevin Sears, principal of Christiansburg High School, and Danny Knott, principal of Eastern Montgomery High School. Mr. Pauley. Thank you, Dr. Graham, members of the board, Ms. Blackburn. I would like to uh, introduce you all this evening to Auburn High School's Senior of the Month for April. It's Annie Blackburn, and she is accompanied this evening by her parents, Anthony and Melody Blackburn, and her younger sister, Sarah, if they would come forward at this time. tell you a little bit about Annie in her own words. Annie believes that many of her friends would say that she is a very responsible person. She added, I am fun to be around and I always have a kind word for everyone. I stay optimistic even when things are hard and I value my family and friends above everything else. FFA is one of the most meaningful activities that Annie has participated in during her four years of high school. She said, I have a lot I had a lot of fun learning about agriculture and it taught me leadership because I am the secretary of the club. While at Auburn, Annie has learned how to balance her time. She explained, I have a challenging curriculum along with a job and family responsibilities. I have learned how to be responsible and stay organized. When asked to describe her most unforgettable experience at Auburn High School, Annie said, the most unforgettable experience I've had during my four years of school is the friends that I have made. I think you can learn a lot and have a lot of things that stick with you, but the most important thing will always be the people you meet. In 10 years, Annie sees herself as a Virginia Tech graduate with a degree in natural resources conservation and in education. She hopes to be an agriculture teacher. She added, my experiences at school will help me reach my goals because I can get into a good college and my experiences in FFA have helped me make my career decision. Ladies and gentlemen, I again present Andy Blackburn.
Good evening, nice to see you all. I'm proud to introduce Blacksburg High School Senior of the Month for April 2013, Miss Gina Lee. Gina is escorted tonight by Min Zhang. Could you all please come forward? Gina says her friends usually call her smart, kind, caring, responsible, dependable, and trustworthy. The most meaningful activity Gina has engaged in during her four years at Blacksburg High School is being part of the BHS speech and debate team. She says, I've had the fortune of meeting and learning from wonderful peers and teachers. They have taught me how to present argumentation, write cases, learn from mistakes, control stress, balance life, and always remain positive. During her four years at BHS, Gina believes one of the best attributes she has developed is optimism. She says, when life gets tough, it is important to remember to stay positive. When I hit my lows, I've had a fantastic group of teachers and friends who always reminded me to smile. Gina says, working with the preschoolers for almost two years has been the most unforgettable experience while at BHS. In my first few weeks, I tried to get to know the kids, but they were still unfamiliar with me. One day, two girls, twins, wordlessly slipped their hands in mine, and together holding hands, we walked to the buses. That's when I realized I was making a difference. Gina says life has a way of throwing unexpected twists and turns. Wherever I might end up in 10 years, I want to look back and see that I have grown and matured, become a better person who had made a positive contribution to our society. I've learned so much at BHS, and the wonderful experiences from here will only help me in the future. Congratulations to Gina Lee for being selected as Blacksburg High School's Senior of the Month. Good evening, members of the board, Ms. Blackburn. It is my pleasure to introduce to you Christiansburg High School's Senior of the Month, Darian Michaela Thornton. At this time, I would ask that Darian and her mother, Tammy Webb, and her younger sister and future CHS Senior of the Month, Riken White, join me at the front of the room. In Darian's own words, my friends would describe me as a maternal figure that puts others before me. Darian is the friend that everyone goes to for advice and support. She's dependable and courteous, but at the same time, a blast to be around. She can always put a smile on your face, no matter the mood. Basketball is the most meaningful and influential activity she has participated in during her high school career. It has pushed her beyond limits, even though she, did, even though she didn't know she had. Through basketball and her coaching staff, she has learned leadership skills, perseverance, dedication, and time management. The relationships she built through this program and the lessons she learned will last a lifetime. <laughs> Cosmetology is a trade that Darian discovered and fell in love with during her time at Christiansburg High School. Taking this class through CHS has enabled her to graduate with a license in cosmetology. Darian owes a big thank you to her teacher, Ms. Ratliff, for preparing her and developing her skills. Her most unforgettable experience in high school was her overtime game-winning buzzer beater this past basketball season. Down by one point against Cave Spring High School with seven seconds on the clock, Darian's teammates trusted her to win the game and she came through. In 10 years, Darian sees herself as a college graduate with a job she truly enjoys. Still undecided about the path she wants to take, Darian simply wants to end up with a career that doesn't feel like working, but rather a passion. Her high school years have prepared her for the next chapters in her life. Darian Thornton. Ms. Blackburn, Mr. Jones, members of the board, it's my privilege tonight to introduce to you Eastern Montgomery High School Senior of the Month, Marilyn Whitaker. Marilyn is accompanied tonight by her mother and father, Ben and Angela Whitaker, and her sister, Sydney. If they would come forward, please. <clears throat> the 
these are Marilyn's words. My friends would characterize me as polite, kind, and willing to help them in any way. I think my friends would also say that I'm a positive person who looks at situations from the glass as half full perspective. My most meaningful experience in high school was being able to participate in journalism classes. This has caused me to be more aware of the things around me and has taught me perspective. I enjoy being part of the, my student body through creating school newspapers, and it has given me a sense of connection to my community. Being able to affect those around me through journalism is a big responsibility, and I am thankful that I had that opportunity. I have developed many skills during my four years of high school. I have become a better writer and have enjoyed furthering my skills through art. However, I have not only grown in these ways through my studies, but I have developed new ways of thinking. I have learned the necessity of having an open mind and the importance of looking at situations from every angle. I have learned how to appreciate the differences between people that make them unique, along with building lasting relationships. One specific skill that has become stronger in my life is communication. I enjoy interacting with people more and understand communication is essential in whatever you do. My most unforgettable experience at EMHS was being able to represent my school by attending Girls State this past summer. This experience was such an honor for me. I am grateful to have had the opportunity to meet so many new people and obtain new perspectives. During my time there, I was able to better understand how I can be an effective leader in my school and community, and that knowledge will stay with me throughout my life. I am not really sure what I will be doing in 10 years, but my experiences at Eastmont have taught me skills that will benefit me no matter what career I choose. As you go through high school, you become responsible and independent for your actions, and you learn how those actions can affect others. High school has taught me that no matter where I go or what I do, my education does not stop. Throughout my life, I will continue to gain knowledge and encounter new experiences that will shape me into who I will become. Congratulations, Marilyn. Our next award again will recognize Dr. Lois Graham, who will present our uh, Governor's Awards to schools. Good evening again. It is a pleasure to share with you tonight that three Montgomery County schools earned the 2013 Board of Education Virginia Index of Performance Awards. The VIP incentive program recognizes schools and divisions that exceed minimum state and federal accountability standards and achieve goals established by the governor and the board. This year, I would like for Carol Kaler to come forward, representing uh, Gilbert Lincoln Elementary. The school earning the Board of Education Excellence Award is Gilbert Lincoln. And we are certainly proud to see Gilbert Linkus in this elite group. Only 51 schools and one school division earned the Board of Education Excellence Award. Congratulations, Mrs. Kaler and Gilbert Linkus. The schools being honored for earning the Board of Education Distinguished Achievement Award are Auburn Elementary School, which is being represented by Marcia Settle and Dom Saya, if they will come forward, and Harding Avenue Elementary School, which is being represented by Megan Marshall. 98 schools earned the Board of Education Distinguished Achievement Award, and we are certainly proud of Harding and Auburn and their staff for being in this distinguished group. Congratulations.
At this time, the board will take about a five-minute break. It will give the board members an opportunity to uh, congratulate those who have been recognized tonight, and the board will convene again in five minutes. As public address, this is where the board sets aside 30 minutes for public address with a maximum of three minutes per citizen to address the board on items of educational interest. We do have a lighting system on the uh, podium, and uh, it is green while your uh, time is good, and it turns to yellow when you have 30 seconds left, and then at the end of your time, it turns red. And at this time, we have one person signed up for public address, Barbara Van Dyke. Please step forward and state your name and address. <coughs> My name is Barbara Van Dyke. I live at 4397 Fraser Road in Radford, Virginia. I am an ISS aide at Blacksburg Middle School and at Charlottesville Middle School. I'm here to request that you take into consideration the Obamacare law that goes into effect January 2014. According to the Obamacare law, an employer with over 50 employees and their employees who work over 30 hours a week who are considered full time only has to offer insurance to the employees that is cost efficient. The insurance only has to be offered, and if the in individual does not purchase the insurance, then they are fined individually $98 the first year, and then it doubles, and then it triples. Many aides have insurance through their husband's work, go to the VA, and already have their own individual plans. We have been told we cannot opt out. I understand it is a given, and we have no choice. I have talked to several Montgomery County officials, and I am told that Obamacare allows local governments and schools to delay this coverage until the start of the next budget date, which for Montgomery County will be July 2014. Therefore, the decisions concerning this do not have to be made now. I also understand that the budget was approved last night by the Board of Supervisors, and tonight we are to hear the cuts suggested in the school budget. I am mentioning our dilemma before the cuts are suggested that the aides will be con given consideration. We are the little people in Montgomery County school system. The aides work directly with special students and probably know them better than their teachers. <clears throat> I have received emails from several aides who are concerned about what will happen to wages concerning the Obamacare deliver, dilemma. Will the health care be of quality that will actually pay for something if we are sick or injured? How much will deductible be? How much will we have to co-pay for a doctor's visit? I know there is no answer to these questions until you all hear back from Anthem, but please remember, we have not had a raise in four years. When federal taxes went up, there went a part of our salary, and now a big chunk will go to health care that a lot of us do not need. Those of us that receive the incentive have worked with the county for more than five years, and now everyone will be getting the same benefits as the longtime employees. Will there be compensation for the longtime employees? Increase in wages? a step raise, and how many aides will stay. Please consider our circumstances and realize most of us have been employed in Montgomery County for four or more years. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes all that have signed up. If there's anyone else in the audience that would like to address the board at this time, if so, please step forward and state your name. Thank you, Chairman Jones. My name is Connie Froggett. I reside at 1751 Brush Mountain Creek Road, and I'm speaking tonight as the president of the Blacksburg High School PTSO because I'm very concerned about one budget item in particular. For the most part, I support this budget, and I do hope it goes forward as it is. But in reflecting upon what happened yesterday, the anniversary that's occurring today, the thought of safety in particular is very much on my mind, and with that, I'm very concerned about how we are stretching our administrators, particularly in our secondary schools. Last year, we tried a little experiment at Blacksburg High School and Christiansburg High School by eliminating our one AP slash AD position. But what has really happened is we lost an assistant principal because the athletic director's job is a full-time job. So we now have three assistant principals at Blacksburg High School. And although they have not missed a beat, and if anything, they've probably worked better as a team than I've ever seen anyone work together, we are literally working them to death. I am frequently at the high school now just because of events going on, and I see at least two administrators' cards there until seven o'clock every night. 
Now, I know they're salaried employees. They're expected to work more than the usual eight hours, but I think this is asking a little too much. And on top of that, they're usually there for a good chunk of the day on Saturdays, not to mention they also help cover athletic events when the AD can't be there. I'm particularly concerned about the effect this is having on Blacksburg High School. Given that we are trying to open a new school, we do have a very wonderful sub who comes in when Mr. Kitts has to be away, but it's not the same. And it's not that our kids are suffering because like I said, they are stepping up, it's that they are suffering. And next year we're gonna move into a facility that's nearly 300,000 square feet and it's gonna be covered by three assistant principals. That's 100,000 square feet per person. I don't think they can cover that. And I, I think it's gonna affect the safety and it's gonna affect the smooth running of our schools, despite the fact that they are doing everything they can to make up the difference. It's just not working. It's a failed experiment. So I'm asking you tonight, I, I hate to see, you know, we, yes, we need to have supplies back. Yes, we need buses. And I, I would hate to see us lose any more teaching positions, but I feel like our secondary schools have really borne the brunt of these cuts, particularly at the administrative level. And I think you, if you look deep down, there are ways you could perhaps consider restoring these two positions at both Blacksburg High School and Christiansburg High School. And also, please keep the assistant principal positions at our middle schools. Given the cuts coming there, they need to stay as well. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board at this time? If so, please step forward and state your name and address. Seeing no one, public address is now closed. Next item on our agenda <coughs> is consent items. Anybody want to pull anything under the consent items for discussion? Just like to thank Wells Fargo for their generous donation of $1,000 to Practice Fork Elementary um, in appreciation for um, the ORF Ensemble. For, I guess they must have had some um, provided entertainment at one of their meetings. Very generous. Anything else? I agree. Hearing none, items approved <coughs> on consent. The next item on the uh, agenda is the personnel report. Need a motion to approve the personnel report? So moved. Any discussion on the personnel report? Can we just double check that they can do it? Oh, I'll, I'm sorry. I'll In second. Hold on, hold one. Now, discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. <coughs> Next item on our agenda is the financial reports. Need a motion to pay the bills? So moved. Second. Any discussion on the bills? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Next item under financial reports is the approval of the financial summary. Need a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is the superintendent's reports, recommendations, and announcements. Ms. Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Jones. First item this evening is the uh, recommendation for textbook adoptions for grades three through five science. The information regarding this adoption was provided to you as an information item at your previous meeting. It's presented this evening for your approval. Dr. Goudreau is available if you have specific questions and I'd certainly like to take the opportunity to thank Patty and the teachers who reviewed the books for their outstanding work in uh, bringing this recommendation, recommendation to us this evening. Motion to approve. <coughs> Second. Any discussion? I have one question. Do they have an online component or is it a digital component that comes with it as well? Okay. Is there any way of getting these on ebooks for e readers or anything like that? textbook is available online so if you have a device that is um, capable of accessing the internet then the the book is available for students so my next question which is a redundant question would be how many students in an average class have a device 
that could pull that up. And if that were true, and many of them would have that, how many would we have to supply to fill a classroom versus buying a book for every kid? We don't, I don't have that. An answer, yeah. <laughs> but if you care to try, go ahead. Uh, we don't have that data, so I I couldn't uh, answer right, the right, question. My point, my point. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. But my yeah, following up with Joe, is there a way that we could find that out and see whether this would help us? It would only be it would only be through parent or student self-reporting that we could gain that information right. as to who has access. And then again, it's very difficult to get the information with a standard included in the response. So we do have some things going on with bring your own device, which allows students to bring their device and then others in the classroom who may want to do the same activity have an opportunity to use devices that are provided by the uh, school division. We don't have a one-on-one -on -one computing right. initiative. And certainly that's one of the things that the board has indicated an interest in speaking about at the retreat. So it is on our radar. We just have not been able to um, identify the funds for doing so. What that means is that for those students who don't have a computer, we would work yeah. toward giving them. Generally, one, when, you have, them when you have a one-on-one -on -one initiative, everybody gets one. Mm -hmm even oh. kids who may have them at home because it sets a standard platform for what the device everyone in a classroom is using. But now we are doing some things that can be done using a variety of uh, devices, some of which students provide and some of which are from the classroom uh, technology uh, that we have available for them. This isn't Thank the time you. to- I think we've got it. Now, this isn't the time to talk about that, but. No. No. But. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes, I'm opposed. I want to take a path to the 21st century, so I don't want books. I want e-readers. Okay. We got a vote, though, correct? Did you, did you get the vote? Okay. I'm just checking. <laughs> so our next item is the 2013-2014 budget update. And we have the latest at our you, you have the latest at your um, disposal in front of you and also on your uh, iPads. I apologize, it's a little small for those folks who are seated in the audience. For those of us seated here too. Uh -huh. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I'd like to take the opportunity to, tonight to provide the board a brief update on the status of our budget request to the Board of Supervisors. As of last evening, the anticipated revenue from the Board of Supervisors was established by the actions of the supervisors at their meeting. First of all, by a vote of four to three, the supervisors approved the two cents per hundred increase in real estate taxes. The proceeds from the, in, from the increase are designed to go into a reserve fund for future capital needs of the school system. I thought you'd be interested in knowing that there was a great deal of discussion among the supervisors about the desirability of allowing these funds to accumulate over the next five years at a minimum so as to create a solid financial base for future construction needs. Two cents will generate approximately $1.4 million per year. So the Board of Supervisors couldn't bind future boards, but it was clearly the desire of the sitting board that these funds not be touched except in the case of an extreme emergency and be allowed to accumulate. Secondly, by a vote of five to two, the supervisors approved the 10 cent increase in personal property taxes. This was the first increase in tax on personal property since 1993. The increase will generate approximately 500,000 per year and these proceeds are designed to go to the school division. In addition, the supervisors directed 1.7 million in expected new money 
to the operating budget of the school division, bringing the new money for Montgomery, Public, Montgomery County Public Schools to $2.2 million, 1.7 from increased revenue expectations and $500,000 from the personal property tax increase. Third, in addition, the Board of Supervisors had quite a bit of discussion about uh, some remaining uncommitted funds in their budget. There were about 300 plus thousand dollars that were uncommitted. And from that, the Board of Supervisors ultimately voted five to two to give $137,999 of that unencumbered balance to Montgomery County Public Schools for the school board operating fund. The discussion included quite a bit of conversation among the board members that they hoped that the school board would consider this as you deal with the issue of sequestration. So, I appreciate the actions of the Board of Supervisors last evening to provide additional support for Montgomery County Public Schools. They have continued to offset the steady loss of state funds. However, there remains a gap between our needs-based budget and our actual revenue available to the school board for 2013-2014. The gap prior to the addition of the $2.2 million, $2 million and the $137,990 from the county and the $700,000 from the state was $4.2 million. With the additional revenue that was approved last night, the gap between the original request and the available funds is $1,490,127. So that is the number that we're trying to fill. $1,490,127. So now, if we think we've been working hard, now we really have to start working hard because we have to come up with the plan to close the gap. You will recall that in January, I gave you a preliminary list of items that I had considered for reduction. And from that list, some of them I recommended and some of them I didn't recommend, but there was a, a listing that went up to almost three and a half million dollars in potential reductions and that is found um, on the pages before you. So for the remainder, I'm gonna try to simplify it a little bit by bringing your attention to a specific line on the budget handout that you have in front of you. On line two of page one, it's labeled Superintendent's Proposed Budget Request 2013-2014. On line two, the latest information on sequestration from the Department of Education, Virginia Department of Education, indicates that the loss of funds may be closer to 5% than the initially estimated 8.2%. So for that reason, if you look at line two, you'll see I originally asked us to put $352,068 on that line. I've reduced that to $214,675, which is the 5% loss of funds as opposed to the originally estimated 8.2%. On line four on page one, this was the item in which we reinstated some of the previous cuts to instructional supplies. You'll see in the center of the page, I had originally recommended that we restore $300,000 to the instructional supplies budget. If you follow that line over to the right, I'm recommending that we reduce that to $200,000 restored to the schools rather than the originally uh, requested $300,000. On line 16, on page one. This is one time fund, well I missed one, I'm sorry. On line five, the $4,500 restored for field trips. 
I suggest that we remove that, res that restoration of $4,500 for field trips from the budget. On line 16 on page one, which was replace one-time funds for the replacement of aging school buses, I had originally in the center of the page budgeted for the replacement of four buses. And if you move to the right, I've cut it in half and recommend that we purchase two buses instead of four. So these are actually things that I have planned to increase but which in light of the fact that we have to reduce uh, just over $1.4 million, I'm recommending that we reduce those expenditures. And that comes to $416,893. And um, Walt is checking my addition back there because I'm- Say that again. Those changes come to $416,893. The change on line two, the change on line four, the change on line five, and the change on line 16. And can I interject here? So on line one, that is an unfunded mandate right there, if I understand correctly. We could consider that, right? You're talking line two? I mean line two. From the uh, sequestration, that is my recommendation that if we lose 5% of the funds that we use for our neediest kids, that it will make a huge difference in the academic achievement of students. But yes, it is money that will be taken away by the feds that you have an option to replace or not to replace. Okay. And in line six, the health well, insurance well, company. Can I add something to that? Mm -hmm. So that's not an estimate, that's, that's the, the amount. Based on the most recent data from the Virginia Department of Education, right. as they've followed the feds, okay. this is the number. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and who knows if it's real or not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So line six on the health insurance due to the Affordable Care Act, that's another unfunded that is correct. We had initially put this number on this line because we thought that the existing insurance program for our employees was going to go up potentially by that much. You'll recall that it ended up it was only going to go up by 0.9% and Anthem waived that increase. We've left that number in the budget because the board will have to deal with the impact of the Obamacare requirements, but yes, it is a requirement for which you have not been provided funds. And that is the and same thing from line seven with the VRS. That's another state mandate that's coming down that we have to start supporting the insurance. This budget includes restoring the remaining 4% of the 5% shift in VRS funds from the employer to the employee and the money was not provided by the state for doing so. And then on line eight, the salary, 2% salary increase is kind of a bit of arm twisting again by the state that if we don't accept the SOQ funded positions funding, then this number here would, we would be given a raise to everyone, correct? That's, that's correct. The uh, state gave us approximately just over $400,000 for the 2% raises for employees, but to give all of our employees a 2% raise requires $1.625 million. So if my math is correct, it's about $2.2 million of unfunded these, these mandates that we have to do or it would be difficult not to do. That is correct. Okay. So again, just to recap, <coughs> my recommendations in, the, in that segment of the budget are on lines two, four, five, and 16. And they're basically not making purchases that we have planned to make. Moving on now to page two, on line one of page two. This is the exact same information that I gave you back on January 22nd. The chart is identical to the chart that you saw on January 22nd. 
so I've reduced four hundred and sixteen thousand plus dollars on page one and now I'm going to look at page two tonight I'm going to provide you with my recommendations based on the real definition of the gap and um, on page two line one there was a leadership change which resulted in our director of special education moving to point six I mean point eight of a FTE instead of 1.0 and that saves us about fifty three thousand dollars that's one reduction that I recommend on line one you're saying that the director of special ed would be moved to she has been working a point eight position since March 1 which was approved by the board at that time and now it will go whole or no it will remain at remain. point eight for the 13 14 school year and it's a savings of about fifty three thousand dollars because we no longer pay VRS nor do we pay a 1.0 salary we pay point eight number two is a summer Academy change we'd initially looked at totally eliminating it and putting that responsibility back on the individual high schools but because of the fact that we're going to have two high schools that are pretty overburdened this summer and will have a very difficult time I believe running their own summer school program I'm recommending that we reduce that cut to twenty five thousand dollars and do a centralized summer program again at Christiansburg Middle School for one more year on line and that's line two on line four this was the line about supplemental positions I had originally looked at up to a hundred and nine thousand dollars in savings for supplemental positions and I know the board has very strong feelings about taking money away from people who have grown accustomed to having it however as much as I have looked at this I have a very hard time justifying providing our school nurses with 20 days of work when students are not present I consider it a nice to have but not required for proof for providing the necessary health services and records review that we need for our students it's something that was added when you had available resources to do it so I'm recommending that we move the nurses from a 200 day contract to a 190 day contract and it saves twenty eight thousand dollars and I'm recommending that every other supplemented position be reviewed when it becomes vacant for a potential opportunity to reduce the extended days that are in that contract the nurse group is so small that I think it would take you a long time to be able to adjust that contract year and it is it is really a nice to have and not a mandatory requirement for the school district in fact 190 days is not even mandated 180 days is your student day and that's when you most need your nurse services so that's my recommendation on line four skipping down to line eight I started out with this line when we were looking for 4.2 million dollars or three and a half million dollars or one of those bigger numbers we looked at increasing class size by 0.5 FTE in grades K through 12 and we and I have changed that based on the current budget to reducing one FTE from elementary grades three through five we've looked at the projected class size for next year we believe we can do this without a great deal of difficulty it saves sixty thousand five hundred and sixty two dollars the big one is the change that we made in the in the middle school scheduling model and it has provided um, although we initially estimated 19.71 positions the schools have actually worked the schedule now it's been reviewed we know what they can uh, do without and combine and com and collapse and what they can't and it is closer to 15.0 units but it saves you nine hundred six thousand six hundred dollars and that's my um, final recommendation for a total of one million seventy three dollars two hundred seventy three thousand two hundred and thirty four dollars on page two 
and $416,893 on page one, which fills the gap of $1,490,127. So this evening, I offer you these recommendations for your consideration and your discussion either this evening or at your board workshop on April 25th, which begins at 7 p.m. If the board desires pricing information for other recommendations that are not included on my sheet, I need that feedback from you so that I can be prepared to provide you with that information on April 25th. Board members, comments, questions on the budget as presented by the superintendent? I do have a question I about no, uh, item nine where we were modifying the middle school class schedule. We actually had a vote on that mm -hmm. in the previous meeting. So why would this be included in here as like we're voting on it again kind of thing? It's it's not really. I just had to show a way to balance the budget that was initially created, and this is where 900000 came from. I mean, I could add it, I could take it away on the mm -hmm. expenditure side, but since we started it this way, it appeared easier to continue it this way. And I just need clarification on um, the proposed budget request number nine, restoring the two vacant maintenance positions for the new schools. Is that because they're larger schools? Yes, and they were va they were vacant, and we didn't fill them when we moved them into uh, Blacksburg Middle School and when we um, Auburn High School. So these are like the building engineers who run the sophisticated systems that are in those new buildings. And they are already budgeted positions. We took them last year as a one-year only cut. Those schools, those new schools could not run without these, these uh, maintenance positions. Is it because they are larger yes. schools? They're larger and much more complex, the systems in those schools. The systems? Uh, like, like HVAC, electrical, plumbing, all of those things. on page two, item three, and reducing the, the uh, days for the nurses. You know, remember how we struggled, Mr. Jones, to get nurses in each one of those buildings. So I would like to see exactly what they do with those extra 20 hours that you're talking about. It's 20 days. 20 days, or I'm sorry, 20 days. You know, you know, I hear what you're saying when the children are there, but there are also, I'm sure, tasks that need to be taken care of, you know. They do our health records, but right. I'd be glad to uh, help you with that and to provide you with some additional information. But even with the reduction of 10 days, they have 10 days in which students are not there that they could do those medical records issues as well. I'd just like to see some data. But I will provide you additional information. Is it has here in the text 200 to 190? So we're reducing 10 days or 20? 10 days. 10 days. Okay. They have a 200 day contract. There's 180 student days. The reduction allows them 10 non working days to 10 non student days that they're in the buildings. And, and I guess the, the, the record keeping that I would be interested in is it is this a uh, mandated record keeping kinder thing. it's kindergarten the, all the shot records and that kind of stuff that we have to look at that's one of the biggest biggest pieces okay but we also have a year-round 12 month coordinator who can assist us in that role as well if there happens to be some uh, additional work that is not being able to be covered by the school nurses at the school sites I mean, they're critical. The nurses are, you know, yeah. I don't want a school without a nurse in, in the current day and age. But I also understand that the majority of the work that our nurses do, do is directly with students, you know. And there are some issues. They go on field trips and some things like that. So their day might be longer than the standard student day occasionally. But there, there are 20 days there, 20 times eight is, you know, a lot of hours. 
So I made it with after great um, thought. <coughs> Well, board members, you know what one of my feelings are, and that's on the capital. I mean, I, I do not believe that capital uh, maintenance of our buildings and buying buses, and uh, you know, I, I can see a bit of a gray with the 20th century classroom, but fun, trying to, to fund things out of a capital stuff out of a operational budget is just not good. And we've got to get away from that. And I've said that several budget years that we need a, a separate budget for capital and a separate budget for operational instead of trying to roll the two together. Because there's a number of things that we could, and it may be just simply creating different spreadsheets, but um, I'm just opposed to having a capital rolled into this operational part of our budget. And I just, I don't know. You'll recall that last year the County manager recommended that the three items that are on lines 14, 15, and 16 be funded from one-time money. It was right. right. It was, and that was the only time <coughs> since I've been here that that kind of recommendation was made. But he recommended it as part of his budget recommendation last year. Right. This year, the county manager nor the board of supervisors have dealt with the one-time money that will be generated in June, it's from the two cent increase. So my understanding is that they will be talking about that. So certainly this board would have an opportunity to uh, draft a request to the supervisors asking that they fund these items from one-time money or some of these items from one-time money and allow you then to restore that money to your budget. Yeah. But for right now, you don't have access to that money. So I would not, if I couldn't get the money from the supervisors from their one-time money, I would not want to sacrifice the roofing plan. I just wouldn't. And we won't I mean, know about that until June. It's, pardon? We won't know about that till June. Um, they did not deal with it, nor did they set a window that they planned to talk about it at last evening's me meeting, although it was mentioned that they would be talking about it in the future. I think but we should make a request. Thank I mean, you. I think that's what's going to be suggested. I mean, I think if we need to send a letter across the hall and, and say that we would like for them to consider that again next, as this they did last year for this year. So, uh, again, it's operational versus capital, and we're, yes. we're, we're, we're kicking the can down the road on capital all the time Thank you, sir. and trying to fund it through operational needs. Thank you. And we've also got, you know, $2.2 .2 million of unfunded things here. Right. And, you, and you're talking about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, right there, that with is the correct. capital, right. which yes. which you will know, solve the problem. Well, five hundred seventy-five, according to what Brenda's proposing. I can, I, and I understand on the twenty-first century classroom that some of that goes to be part of how we continue to work with our classrooms and some of the things that we're doing. So, uh, but the maintenance plans, you know, we are stewards of the building and the grant. Okay, that's what we are. We're the stewards. They hand it over to us, and we're responsible for taking care of the buildings and the grounds, and we do the best job we can. But they're also a partner with us in trying to help us keep those buildings and grounds up because when we're done with them, we give it back to them and hopefully can give it back to them in a, a decent condition. So, you know, it, it's they're, they're helping themselves out if they can help Mr. us keep these things from a capital standpoint going on. And then you're replacing aging buses. You know, it's part of operation. You've got to look at your buses. I, I guess, and maybe Walt had put this, Mr. Shannon had put this in some previous presentations, but it would be interesting to know where we're at on the, our bus age and mileage. I don't know. If yeah, that, we, I, I we had that data last year. We certainly can resurrect the data, but you know, to really stay ahead of the curve, I think we would need to be buying eight buses, not four and not two. So that, that's well, my request mm -hmm. to you this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to do the request, you know, if the board tells me exactly what you want me to ask for, but you probably won't have an answer in time to balance your budget. Right. So my, my approach as I looked at this today to bring you a recommendation was find a way to balance the budget that is perhaps not 
palatable, but it's the most palatable that I could come up with, knowing that we can go to the supervisors, ask for additional funds from that June, from the June revenue. If we get it, great, you get to come back and restore some things to the budget. If you don't get it, then you will have made decisions that could, could be lived with within the system. I would, ha I would have a very hard time not having any roof money. I mean, it's the, and this is not nearly enough. I mean, you really need $4 million for roof. Well, again, I was going to bring up the whole cardio. <laughs> but check. this is your part. This is your band aid. I mean, we we've got a report mm -hmm. that talks about mm -hmm. how the fact we've got boilers, we've got components in our buildings mm -hmm. now that if they break down, mm -hmm. you can't find replacement mm -hmm. parts for them. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's your long time. That's your long term capital conversation that's coming up on mm -hmm. May 14th. You know, long term is hitting us right in the face yeah, right exactly. now too. So, do we need at this point? Um, a motion to ask for possibly the extra money. That's my question. I'd be glad to move that. Are you making a motion? Motion. Now? Yeah, I so okay. much. So I need you to be real specific. I know. I move that we ask the Board of Supervisors if there is one time money for the, I would ask for the 750000 for the replace one time funds for building repair roof maintenance. 21st century classroom improvements and replacing four buses. I will draft a letter if that's the desired board. Is, is that going to is that going going to address this budget? In yeah. It won't. Time -wise? It will not allow you to stop the process of balancing this budget. So in all likelihood. A, so it's an irrelevant. We don't. It's not irrelevant. It would at let this you. Point it is. No, it, it would isn't. let you come back and restore. Yeah funds to the budget that you had cut. It wouldn't wouldn't prevent you from having to make some tough decisions right now, but it would allow you to come back and undo them. I, I'm, I agree with Wendell completely, except we've hurt kids over and over and over again through this budget process over the last four years. And now, and now we're at a point where um, safety is an issue. And I think it's an important issue. Um, we've, we've got situations that are happening every time we pick up the newspaper, whether it be the Boston Marathon or whether it be a, uh, an elementary school in, in Newtown or, or, or whether it be a, um, a, a situation at our local mall. Um, the thing that I found out in my years in education was this, the more eyes you have looking for situations, the better off you are. And we keep on taking those eyes away. We get, a, whatever, we get rid of administrators, we get rid of athletic directors, we get, we're, we're looking at the nurses and we're cutting them back, and we keep on pecking away at this situation so that when the person who's going to do something comes into the building, he's not gonna be or she's not gonna be recognized. And they can be recognized in many cases. They can be recognized by a conversation with an administrator, a nurse, a teacher, someone. Many of these situations, after the fact, people have said, you know, I remember him being kind of weird and blah, 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 blah. And if we keep on taking personnel away from the schools, then that's going to affect our ability to keep the schools relatively safe. And I just think that for us to keep cutting positions and keep cutting administrative positions and nurses and custodians, whatever it may be, we keep cutting and cutting and cutting. It's sinful to the point where we're going to have big problems. And I agree with you. That's the reason why I want to go back yes. to the Board of Supervisors exactly. and ask for the money so that we can restore assistant principals and, and ADs and, and do some things exactly. that have more eyes. We're not yes. able to do that exactly. because we're funding capital. Yes. Exactly. And that's why I say I agree with you, except we need those eyes and we need them. We can't take any more away. I, I may have, this may not be the correct time to bring this up, but, and, and help me understand when we were throwing around figures in the beginning and, and what we had brought up, 
did we discuss the savings of the gas cost from having to transport Blacksburg to Christiansburg? Because I know when we did that, there was a cost affiliated. There is. It's going into the move that's going to cost about a hundred thousand gotcha. dollars. Okay, it so part it's of the just plan. it's budgeted gotcha. money, but it's going to go in the move to bring BMS back to Blacksburg. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. At, at what I'd point? Like to so we still have a motion on the table, but no second. Mm -hmm. So I guess with this amount of time, you can say it's dead. Um, so I've got a question. Mm -hmm. So with um, sequestration, when will we know about those funds? <laughs> I really can't even begin to speculate on that. You know, it was supposed to be January, then it was supposed right. to be March, and now they're saying, you know, June. Um, it, you don't know, but it's it's not. In my opinion, it's not safe to not budget it if you don't want to take the services away from kids. Right. And, and I, mm -hmm. I believe mm -hmm. that is a good way to, that mm -hmm. we need to approach that. Mm -hmm. But it's already come down two and a half percent. Mm -hmm. Two point two. Right. So my concern with especially hearing some of the discussion last night with our supervisors, is going back and asking for more money that we need, you know, for the capital. I absolutely agree with you guys. But we have, I don't know that they would be so willing at this point to say, okay, we'll give you the money before they've had time, before they've even started looking at what kind of money they're going to have, you know? Um, I've right. got some. They're going to have one month of two cents. Yeah. So, Mr. Shannon, would can you tell me how much money that is? I'm, sometimes I can't talk and do math at the same time. Last year it was, you know, quite a bit of money, but it was twelve cents right. for one. Well, month. based on the previous budget, yeah. uh, one for one cent increase in the real estate tax generally uh, uh, increased seven hundred thousand dollars. So year. you're only talking for half a year mm -hmm. on this, which would then would generate three hundred fifty thousand. So the total would probably not exceed seven hundred thousand mm -hmm. uh, ba based on the. Um, on that increase. Okay. Your increase last year was uh, based on uh, a 12 cent in, in increase, yeah. and so it would be a m much, much lower number. Okay. Your, an your question on sequestration and when you get into the federal, uh, if you recall, the federal government's budget begins one September and runs, uh, or starts one October and runs through uh, September 30th. Normally it's in August and September when we receive the final allocations as to what our budget allocations are going to be under the new grants. And these are mostly titles. Your Title I, uh, Title VI, which is special <coughs> ed, uh, Title III, English language learners, most of those titles. We usually receive an indication about this time of year to fill out a grant application, but we don't know what um, that final amount's gonna be. And the state really can't tell us at this time because they have not received uh, what their amount's going to be for the upcoming budget years. So, but they are getting, they're constantly in contact with, uh, you know, the uh, feds and the gentleman who is the director of special education for the Department of Education, Virginia, is the one who gave us this yep. number based on the conversations with the feds feeling fairly confident that it would go down from an 8.2% reduction to a 5% reduction. And the conversations in which I've been involved, they're pretty sure that the 5% is gonna go through. And if you watch yeah. some of the little things that are happening, you know, some things are happening like capital tours, uh, like the Blue Angels flights uh, are being canceled. And it is a result of 
the impact of sequestration. So this is the best available current information. Yeah. And when it, when it changes, as we've done every year, we address it through uh, supplemental appropriation request, uh, either up or down once we know the better numbers. Do we have a fill for our own budget and if there is any carryover money at all? Right. I know last year we didn't, I, the board did not hear that information until like at, June. At, but at this time, our projections are no carryover. Actually, we're having to still look for money, so yeah. at this time, there's no carryover. The expenditures are ahead of last year right at the moment. Yeah. If other, you look at that the balance the sheet. The carryover, you will, uh, we will be addressing either the one way or the other is the 400000 which has been appropriated for capital uh, money, is in our budget now uh, through a supplemental appropriation. We will not be able to spend all that by June 30th because a lot of the work happens uh, during the summertime. So there'll be, but that's a separate pot of money that we'll be addressing. But from this year's operating budget it, at this time, there'll be very little, if any. But also, as the feds work through their budget issues, programs can be re restored. Right. So just because programs are being cut and things are being cut, that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way permanently, even through the end of the year. Exactly. Um, I also have a concern with the um, Affordable Health Care Act and our part-time employees and what exactly that's going to look like. You know, even with 200, what was it, $230,000, mm -hmm. it still could look very different because we have no idea how that is going to finally end up right. affecting us. Sure. Well, Anthem has been working on it, and you're not required to provide the exact same plan for part-time employees that you do for our regular employees. <coughs> if we had to provide the same plan, for the 30-hour people, it's going to cost you $8,000 a person. So this is really there as a um, safety cushion for us to be able to afford a modified plan for uh, our part-time folks. And I wouldn't recommend reducing it at no, this I'm, point. No, I'm not I'm saying way, I'm not no. saying reduce no. it. Uh -uh. I'm just saying there, but there, there are no other factors answers. in here mm -hmm. that what little bit of money we might be able to get, extra money from the supervisors, from their um, surplus, we may need it just to cover things that we have to cover. Because it's, it's, you know, it's not even gonna be enough for what the request that we would need, the $750,000. Again, that's the reason why I was requesting <coughs> the, that we go back about the capital. That's what I'm. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. It's we may need to ask for those funds just to cover these two items that I've talked about because we won't have the funding. So we should ask now. I'd, I'd like to. Uh, but uh, what you're saying is we might not spend that money on capital. We'd have to spend it on other things like insurance or something. Right. Yeah. I'd like to reintroduce that motion. Yeah. That we. Um, Sent a letter to the uh, supervisors indicating that the, I believe it's five hundred and seventy-five thousand um, dollars, be put into a capital account. Mm -hmm. How am I going to word this? Well, Does that make that's that okay? That's fine. And I'd I'd like to expedite that as rapidly as possible. Um, and I'd also like them to know that. We're working as hard as we can to, to get this budget in line with the figures they've given us, but it's close to impossible. Um, there is, there, as you say, there may be some more money coming. If we can do something with it, 575, that may help tremendously. I don't know. Anyway, I put a motion on the floor. And now I need a second. Second it for discussion. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. So, so you we now have a second and open it up for discussion. Were your thoughts to do that instead of the 750 because we're thinking that they only have 700? The, I'm using uh, Ms. Blackburn's figure of 575, which is minus two buses. Okay. 
So what is the difference between your motion and mine, Joe? That's 750 versus Yours was 750, mine was 575. It's the amount of money, he said. Yeah, yeah. The amount of money is different. For the superintendent's recommendation, to match the superintendent's recommendation. And to move it as quickly as possible to see if we can um, have talked, it affect this this budget. Joe's talked about things. Penny's talked about things that we may have to look at putting back in here, and I think that's one of the reasons we could at least ask. I mean, they can say no. But that and motion was for capital, and it would be to, to right to put toward capital. But we also have the flexibility. If no, not if we ask for it for capital. Yeah, and I'm not going to be caught that, in that exactly. mess again. And in the motion, do we want we want to say that it's specifically for these three items? Mm -hmm. I mean, when we go across requesting it, it would be for these three sure. items. Okay. In the letter. Yeah, with the funds that uh, were approved last night, was it 1.4? Are you including that that they are for that capital into our operating budget? Um, Help me with that. Fund, are that you part. talking about the five hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars? The one thirty-seven. The no. one thirty-seven is in is in here. No, right. No, I'm talking about. Was it the two percent increase that no. was going to generate the one point four mm -mm. for capital no. to try to build the bank? I have not that's touched not included. that two okay. penny. That's okay. off the that's off the table. Okay. But sure. have you included the 137? Not I have okay. included the 137 okay. as additional revenue. Ms. Franklin, specifically my motion is for those three items right there, just for, for clarification. Yeah, I knew. <laughs> and I misspoke about but I wouldn't want to. But doing that frees up money in the operational side Absolutely. that allows us to cover that, even though if we go across the hall and ask for these three items and, and say we're going to specifically do it for capital, it does free up some money that we could address some of the things that have been discussed here and concerns people have. So it does give us some, some more flexibility to deal with some things. And one of those, as Mr. Ivers pointed out, is the needs for security, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. Well, there was some conversation Ms. Franklin and I heard last evening among the Board of Supervisors and the supervisors and the county manager are aware that we have been engaged with the three municipalities, uh, with the county sheriff's office, with the town of Blacksburg police, and the town of Christiansburg police doing security audits. And they are aware of a couple of the top recommendations that are coming out of the audits that I've looked at already. Um, Carol Edmonds mentioned it to them last evening. They have a capital maintenance reserve of $3.4 million. And my recommendation to the board would be as soon as I can give you what I consider the top two or three recommendations from that the safety audit, that we make a request to the supervisors for security improvements to come from perhaps that capital reserve, because it is for those kinds of things. The other thing that's out there that's on the burner is that we have the opportunity to apply for uh, $100,000 with a $25,000 match from the state for security improvements, but the state has not released those grants yet. Mm -hmm. So we, don't, we can't apply for them until they release them. What's so there are, there are some other places that we could approach the supervisors regarding the need to do some enhancements with safety and security in our schools. I think, I think we need to be careful with, I, I don't want our schools to, to end up looking like fortresses. Um, if, if there's going to be security, I think it's got to be internal and it's got to be people have got to be vigilant and they've got to be trained properly and so on. I'm not so sure that um, um, more armed police officers in buildings is, is the answer I want our kids to identify with as they go through school. Um, I don't know where the cost is coming from that, but um, my, my feeling is if we hire, if anybody hires people from Capitol or anywhere else to go into our buildings, then is that going to take money away from 
as I said before, more personnel from the school side who know the kids, who are trained to, like nurses, counselors, trained to recognize different situations, is it gonna take away from those positions? It doesn't necessarily mean personnel to make the buildings more secure. Okay. There are other systems that we can put into the buildings, practices that we put into the buildings but take funding to happen. You know, modifications that may need to happen at some of the buildings. Uh, as Ms. Blackburn, Blackburn has been passing along with uh, information from her uh, meetings with the law enforcement. So my feel is not necessarily personnel. Should we vote on that motion, then? That's what I was getting ready to do. <laughs> I was going to ask her if there's any more discussion on it. Hearing no more discussion, we have a motion on the table. All those in favor of Mr. Ivers vote to request the 575 from the Board of Supervisors for Capital. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Any opposed? We have one opposed. Got it? Did you say you? you yes, yes, I said no. I said no. Okay. Right. Let's double check. You got clarification on that? You, you know I do. I will prepare the letter. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other further discussion on the budget update? Oh. Facilities update. Oh, quick break. Next item is the monthly facilities update. I'd ask Mr. Baronado if he would come to the podium. As he's walking, I would just ask the board if there are any specific pieces of information that you need for the evening of the 25th, if you would give me a heads up so I can have the data available for you, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, I just Dan? Good evening. Uh, going over some of the things we have seen before that we're in process. We did complete the mobile unit, uh, move from Old Price's Fork to Auburn Middle School to replace a deteriorated one there. And we're in process, uh, we've taken the one away from KIPS, cleaned that area up and moved it to Falling Branch, but we'll probably not be able to uh, totally open that until uh, this summer. Roof replacements, we have two for this summer uh, and we got some bids last week and we're in the process of analyzing those for responsiveness and responsibility and reasonable price. Our summer moves, uh, that's the big thing that all, all of your support departments are uh, working on right now. Facilities department, technology, warehouse, purchasing, and also food services. And we're meeting every two weeks and developing our detailed plans on that. And VDOT contacted us last week uh, for a job they wanna do at Bellevue to improve uh, guardrail there and you'll see that go in probably within the next two months. They're coordinating closely with the school and the principal to make sure uh, when they do that, that bus operations and school operations and SOL tests are not impacted. Before you move on, replacement of roofs, is that a ongoing cycle that we just follow or is that through inspection and evaluation of the roofs, right. how, how, how do you do that? Uh, a couple years ago, we had a total system roof analysis and we had they had recommended a number of repairs and roof replacements for a five-year plan. And we did the first year of that and in this year, they were recommending these two roofs be replaced. And uh, that was approved last year and funded and uh, that's what we're in the process and we'll do that this summer. So it's not cyclic, it's something that we really need. Yes. Good, thank you. I'd like to know about the VDOT guardrail at Bellevue. Is that gonna go all the way across the front of the school or no. what exactly? There's an existing that? guardrail at, at where the bus loop exits the school. And right now it comes, uh, it's on 114 and it comes sort of into that exit. And it's going to be, then there's a wood post fence the wood post fence will be taken away and the guardrail extended down into the campus oh. to make it overall much stronger. Okay. Because it's curved, it needs, they've determined it needs a longer length 
to be effective and as strong as it can. A modern standard, it's an old guardrail, and they're bringing it up to their modern standard. Oh, okay. To keep cars from coming onto campus, basically? Uh, well, guardrails deflect cars from going off the road, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. We also look at uh, PTA and booster projects and in the first case here, Town of Blacksburg pro project at uh, Kipps Fields, the restroom they're doing. And uh, you could see this picture was taken last week. It's just about complete. They were testing and balancing uh, the building and expect it to open in a couple weeks. Thank goodness. That's a much needed improvement <laughs> out there over it, what they had. It's a sweet little building as well. It's, it's well done. Very well uh, we are working with uh, Price's Fork. Uh, they put in to uh, develop uh, a raised garden planter there. They're working with Home Depot is helping them with that. And uh, I would mention that we had a lot of help at a number of schools during the big event with Virginia mm -hmm. Tech. Mm -hmm. And uh, at Price's Fork, I think it was Valley Landscaping that uh, really stepped up and, and helped at Price's Fork. So uh, another good little project. And the BHS is also doing Ford Field. What are those? I didn't uh, they're beginning to talk about that. Okay. Uh, those are at the multipurpose fields at the new school. Okay. Uh, they were in the approved conditional use permit as future buildings and uh, the booster clubs are starting to s uh, think about uh, building those. And I missed that, building what? I'm sorry? I missed building what? Uh, uh, storage building. Storage storage building. 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 Uh, out near the practice fields, multi-purpose fields. <coughs> uh, I think it was in February, we started reporting at your request on the status of the former schools, properties. I'll go through it quickly. Uh, the old Blacksburg Middle School, uh, the town received a rezoning proposal and there's a public meeting coming up next Monday, I believe, 22nd. And this information was provided directly by the county manager to us on the current status of the projects, right. properties. Elliston Lafayette uh, Elementary, uh, of course, th those buildings have been demolished. The property is now going to be auctioned. And that date has not been set yet, uh, but that's in the process of being set. So you can look for that to be auctioned. Do you know why move, they moved to auctioning? I don't. Instead of selling? Any the, the property has been, uh, has had signage on it for sale for some time, and although they've had a couple of folks take a look at it, there hasn't really been any real interest, and so the feeling appeared to be that they might move the property more quickly if they were to put it up for auction. How big is that property? It's approximately eight acres, I think. Mm -hmm. Price Fork Elementary School, uh, supervisors put out a request for proposals for prospective purchasers for that in February. Uh, those proposals are due at the end of this month and they'll take a look at those and go from there. Former Blacksburg High School, as you know, the town has expressed an interest in that, but no negotiations have occurred yet. Mm -hmm. Shawsville Elementary School, uh, property is available for marketing for sale. Uh, we are doing some temporary storage in there of ex existing furniture, but we've told them, if you remember, we surplus the building and said we could be out of there if they have a buyer uh, within I think it's 90 days. And finally, 200 Junkin Street, our favorite old school board office. Uh, that is in the process of having the title transferred uh, from the school board to the Board of Supervisors. We're working with the county attorney on that. You already surplus that building, I think, at the last meeting. And that's it. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. And we have next our capital projects update, and I believe Curtis is back with us this evening. Welcome, Curtis.
Good evening. Good evening. I know it's been a couple months since we give an update, um, and there's been a lot of progress since then, and so I was going to show you some photos. I'll start with Auburn High School. Um, the photo on the left is the new entrance to Auburn High School. You can see the canopy structure, a lot of the brick columns, the metal uh, roofing there. Uh, on the right is another photo, another perspective from the southwest side from the road going up to Auburn Elementary School. Uh, you can see the classroom wing on the right. The entrance will be in the middle. The uh, gyms are on the left side of the picture there. Uh, another view of uh, Auburn High School from Auburn Elementary, a uh, view towards the entrance. And then we're moving to the inside of the building. On the right is the uh, main gymnasium at Auburn High School. You can see the two light monitors and the roof uh, paints on the walls. The, the uh, goals are up. So there's a lot of progress in the gym. Uh, on the left is the uh, media center and some of the high base space there. You can see they're protecting some of the columns because they're painting in that area. And then on your right is one of the science labs and you can see the science casework going in in those areas as well. Wow. The Blacksburg High School, uh, some views of the exterior on your left is uh, looking uh, from the southwest towards the classroom wing. Uh, the entrance would be to the left of that, that end of the building. You see some of the glazed block and the brickwork there. All the windows are in pretty much except for a couple. Um, on the, the other picture is the other end of the classroom wing. You can see barely that the uh, greenhouse is being constructed at this time. Um, Uh, this is a view of the uh, media center and the entrance to the building. You can see the new site wall in the front. Uh, classroom building will be on your right there as you're looking towards the entrance um, with the administration on your left. And then this is a picture of Blacksburg High School's gym. Uh, you see the partition in the middle that splits the gyms in here. Of course, there's paint on the walls and uh, a lot of uh, progress in the gym areas. This is uh, on your left is the auditorium uh, view looking at the stage area. Uh, speakers have been installed and lights, fixtures have been installed. You can see the acoustical ceilings. I think they call those floating ceilings or clouds. Um, and you can, uh, on your right is a science lab in Blacksburg High School with some of the casework that's uh, installed there. Um, I'm kind of surprised it's kind of like a small college campus <laughs> to both schools. Now you say that and everyone's going to be saying we built a college. <laughs> <laughs> um, Montgomery County is uh, in the process of procuring FF&E. They're ahead of the ball game there. Uh, some purchase orders have been issued and some are in process. Uh, tennis courts at Auburn High School were turned over last month, so they are using those facilities just as they are the uh, softball field. Uh, we got the building permit for Auburn Middle School last week, uh, and so we are starting the planning for construction to start on Auburn Middle School uh, this summer once students move out of the uh, existing high school. Uh, we're still on target for uh, to meet our dates that's in the contract for substantial completion, which is good news. Uh, a couple other things uh, you should be aware of is we are starting work on, or a branch is starting work on Route 8 to widen the road and make improvements there, which means that, that uh, there will be some traffic concerns uh, for the folks coming from Floyd in that area and, and back home. So. Uh, you will see that over the next month or two. And uh, also understand there might be a tour coming up in the next few weeks. Yes, uh, Millie out of Dan Baronado's office will be contacting you with uh, dates the last week in April and the first week in May. We'll be doing tours at, I think it's 5 p.m. So. We're doing them for you all and also have extended the same invitation to the Board of Supervisors. With that, I'll take any questions. Thanks for being on and yeah. much time. I mean, the time scheduling is A lot of people saying, Thank is you. it really true? It's not going to be opened on time. Are those rumors true? But that's what <laughs> we are. Uh, Thank you. We get, yeah, we get, we analyze schedules every other week, <laughs> it seems like. So we're on target. And the weather's been fairly helpful. Right? Yes, and we're hoping that it. Yeah. The sun comes out and it dries the site, so yeah. we get some of the site work done. So we're crossing our fingers. Thank you. Now, when you say a tour, 
<coughs> I've got a lot of parents who've been asking if they can go and see the building. No, I'll leave that to Miss Blackburn. <laughs> it's not. It's not time for that, Joe. Okay, we we have a very aggressive construction schedule to meet, and okay. so Mr. Kitts and Mr. Polly have been taking uh, department teacher groups in, and they've also been taking selective parent advisory committee groups who would go with them but to do general tours for the public we're not no, that's, there that's, that, that's no. what pretty much we what are doing the good. we are doing the parent advisory okay, good. Yeah. thank you sir. thank you appreciate that yes, thank you when do we start talking about a celebration of the opening <laughs> of these new high schools we usually don't do um, a dedication until after the school is in use. And my recommendation will be that we maintain that. But of course, that's a board decision. because You're gonna be right up to the wire, walking these kids and these textbooks and these teachers and everybody into the building. So if you'll recall from Price's Fork, from East Montgomery, we do them after the folks are in the building and settled. But that certainly is something that I'm happy to have a discussion with you all about. Definitely seems like something to celebrate at some point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I definitely think we will. There will. Mm -hmm. yeah. Better be. Uh, it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the schools do that when they're mm -hmm. ready for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, to you know, have a grand opening, I'm not sure we're going to you know, be ready to do that on the first day of school. We might have a lot of other things on our mind that day. Next item on the agenda is unfinished business and under unfinished business is the school board retreat. And uh, I think the, o the only thing that uh, we, the we, we discussed the Saturday retreat yeah. and we discussed the time from eight to two. Have we put a date out there yet? Oh, okay. I did not look. I don't think we've actually come up with some sort of a targeted date yet in which we want to have our retreat. So I think it would be, if you have your calendars handy, it would, now would be a good time to discuss when we would like to do this. So I would suggest throwing out a month, I'm gonna throw the month of June out there since that school will be finished up. And Superintendent gave us a recommended month. I can't remember what it was, but it sounded more like July. Was it July? <laughs> I think it probably was. That's fine. Hoping that we could maybe have the um, BMS people primarily over in Blacksburg by then, and that would be one of the major moves kind of off our plate. Um, let's look at the calendars, if you've got them with you. So let's go over to July. July. I just suggest we enjoy and avoid the 4th of July. You think? <laughs> yes. That weekend. <coughs> so? I'm happy with the 13th, the 20th, or the 20... I'm not real happy with the 27th. No, I like I the 13th or the 20th. I the 20th would no work better for me. Which would? The 20th. Also. 20th? At this point, both are okay. No. What? 20th won't work for me. I'll be on vacation. I'll start my vacation on the 20th. On the 20th? Yes, ma'am. I have plans. I would really like to suggest this doodle poll thing. If somebody can't do the figuring it out, I'll get on the phone with you and help you figure it out. Just come up with dates or something like this. Yeah, doodle is great. Does anyone have a. So you're talking the 13th? <laughs> I don't know why we can't figure it out now, but that's okay. Yeah. I don't have my summer plans all figured out, but I'd be glad to, you know, let you all figure out the Saturday, and I can fill it in later. But. Well, what was the matter with the 13th? It doesn't work for me, and it's rare that I ever have a date that doesn't work. So. Yeah. Okay, so it's April. But what about, like, even, I know we were talking about um, July, but wonder if we went latter in June because it's got five weeks in it. But 29th like would not. Like the 29th. 29th wouldn't work for me or the first. The first or the 29th wouldn't work. That's what I need to get. Okay. So it's April. Or the 22nd wouldn't be. If we gave it 
till the middle of May, so folks might be able to see more about their planning. In our second meeting in May. But is June 15th a possibility for people? Any I negatives on the 15th? I think the superintendent was saying the month of June is going to be busy getting things pushed to get into the buildings. Right, but so nice. You know, I'm happy to do the 15th. You know, the other, if that works for everybody at the table at the moment, I'm happy to do the 15th. You sure? But the concern I have is I don't really have a lot of feedback from you all about what you want to talk about. And I don't want to just talk to you. No. <laughs> I, I would like for you all to decide what you want to talk about so that we could actually have a conversation about the things that are important to you and you know give me a half hour to talk about you know what I have on my radar for the next year but you know it would appear as I've watched and heard the discussion here that there's some things you all would just like to talk about rather than me have people talk at you well, I thought Wendell's suggestion of looking at last year's retreat and looking at some of those issues that we were involved with then and carrying on. What do you think, Wendell? Is that what you were thinking? Well, I, I think I put several things out there. That's what I'm yeah. looking at up right now. But um, one was virtual learning. One is safety. I think I indicated in the um, email that I think that we need to look at our current state of where our schools are out from a safety standpoint and that we need to create a vision of what we consider to be safe schools three, five, ten years down the road and, and the issues that we're going to face and start addressing and playing that. Uh, I think the same thing is true for um, the uh, virtual learning, online learning. I know that one of the things, and, and Joe touched on this tonight, um, but at the conference, we had a, the technology track at the national conference had a lot of topics talking about moving from textbooks to ebooks and textbooks, how much they had saved, the, the cost related to it. So, you know, it may be worthy of trying to tie virtual learning and ebooks. And again, there was a lot of stuff in the technology track that talked about issuing iPads. I mean, we were, I was seeing numbers of uh, some school divisions issuing 4,000 iPads, 3,500 Chromebooks, different things of that nature but that are occurring out there. So, you know, I think that we, while we are equipping our classrooms with the infrastructure technology, we're at some point in time going to have to start talking about how we're going to equip the students yeah. with the technology. Um, I'll, I don't want to belabor this. I did go to, uh, I think Joe was there as well, on Bring Your Own Device. Um, Fairfax is invested heavily in bring your own device and seems to have a very good handle on that uh, be, be worth uh, pursuing there so those are my topics um, you know I, I think that uh, I can't find them here in front of me right now but I'll dig it out but I'm open to others but I wanted to start the discussion by saying based on my experience and based on what we see out there uh, we're strategic we're vision we're mission we need to use the school board retreat to have those kind of discussions my plan, uh, the bring your own device was Prince William County, which we have to go across the country to find out what Pr Prince William County is doing, and they're doing a great job. So my plan is to go up there and visit, and um, I've talked to the presenter, and they were very happy to have me come up there. So, But again, I think uh, Ms. Blackburn is correct to get something accomplished between now and the middle of June would be very difficult yeah. for a retreat, as much as I would love to hear her speak to me. It should be give and take, not just her speaking. Okay. For, for me to set a date tonight, I uh, wouldn't, you know, I just couldn't do that. I'm kind of like Sarah. Some of my plans in two weeks, I'm going to have a better idea about some things. Okay. I want well, to bring it up and maybe Sarah's then, idea about the doodle whatever it is yeah that's what i was gonna say let's do a I, doodle i think it's you know there's yeah. nothing wrong with trying it if it doesn't work it doesn't work
Okay. All right. Yeah, so we wouldn't. Uh, uh, right. We wouldn't want to be doing any voting. It's, to me, it's more of just providing information to one source, but not really discussing it, because that's also worth <laughs> sticking as well. So, uh, that, but thank you for reminding us. That's a very good point. I appreciate that. But again, if we want to wait two weeks, I just look at your calendar. Start thinking about it, thinking of topics as well. I'll throw my topics out, and I want to con keep the, con the discussion going. And I'd like to throw out the topic, you know, from last year's board working together, board interaction. The evaluation. Yeah, evaluation. Yeah. Any other items of unfinished business by school board members? New business by school board members. Any items of new business? Oh, the sheriff's SRO request. Today you received an email from the uh, Ms. Blackburn saying that the mm -hmm. sheriff has asked that we would put the DARE officer in the county schools. One and day a week. One day a week. And I guess that would be alternating from school to school one day a week. And I, I certainly don't have an issue with it other than, you know, it's just the county schools. It is not all of the schools in the town of Christiansburg or the town of Blackburn. Now they do have officers and the, their officers there, but I just want the board to be aware that we, it wouldn't be like a full coverage for all elementary schools in black in all of the county. I, I well, are the towns officers doing it yet in in the towns at this point? All of the law enforcement agencies have picked up their presence in our schools, mm -hmm. so it's not unusual to have officers walking through. Blacksburg schools, Christiansburg schools, or the county schools, but they're mm -hmm. only the only assigned officer to an elementary school at this point is Falling Branch Elementary School, and then to uh, not today, but I think it was yesterday, I got the request from the sheriff's office that they take a current SRO, I mean a current SRO trained officer who's been doing dare at the elementary schools and assign that person for the remainder of the year on a rotational basis to the elementary schools in the sheriff's jurisdiction. That would be Auburn Elementary, Price's Fork Elementary, Eastern Montgomery Elementary, and Price... Bellevue. 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 I, mean, I named the same one twice, so. And Bellevue. So um, that's the request before you today. I do know from my chief's meeting last week that the federal grants for SROs, for uh, increased SROs in municipalities is out. It has a due date of May 4th. At least two of our law enforcement jurisdictions have indicated that they are interested in writing a grant, although they're a little concerned about the competitiveness sure. of the grant in the big scheme of things from the federal standpoint. And so, uh, if, if they do, on your May 7th agenda, you'll have a copy of that grant because you, need, you would need to agree to accept the officer if they got funded. So that also is probably a little part of what's going on with putting an officer a little bit more in a school to see how it works on a short-term basis and with the it, elementaries. And would an SRO be there throughout the day then? All day in one, one school? One day per day in each of four schools is what the sheriff is. I understand One day that. per week. But that's yeah. for the county. But then if they got this grant. Not would, necessarily. It, it would still be maybe moving around school to school. They would design what their service model would look like. The grant would design what the service model is at the school. So I was curious about how helpful it is. I wanted to know the helpfulness of having an officer in a school just say one day a week rather than having someone there all the time. I was well, just curious to know. About for that. me, just some common sense would be, as Joe kind of alluded or, or spoke to, you have another set of eyes there in the building that are trained to look for you know, things that we might need to tighten up on uh, help folks understand things that they may need to look for. Um, and I would hope that it would not be a 
uh, scheduled rotation so that folks would know when they might be in the building. Um, mm -hmm. I appreciate the fact that the sheriff came to us and asked us mm -hmm. before someone just said, we're gonna do this. What do you all think? You know. <laughs> Well, again, I wanted to make that we're all in agreement we want to do that. I just want to make sure yeah. that those of us that, that uh, were, were asked about full coverage, it is not happening. But it, the, the police presence is definitely there, and I do see it when I drive by the school. Any other items of new business by school board members? Next item is an announcements and information. Any announcements and information? Well, I'd just like to have a moment of silence or at least all of us being together on the special day of today for Tech and New River Community College community and Boston community and the students are very much involved and just the thought from us to, the, to them. And then uh, I do wanna thank the Board of Supervisors for really stepping up for our educational program since the state is being so non-stepping up, shall I say, at this point. And um, then I really want to thank all of the special ed teachers who have helped our students with the Virginia Alternative Assessment Program exams. It was a lot of work from what I understand. Teachers spent many, many hours working with students to complete these tests. And so deepest thanks to all who spent so much time caring and making a difference with our VAAP testing program. Really appreciate it. And uh, I would like to thank the gifted advisory committee for their great work last week. They had two open houses and I went to the open house. I think Sarah was there as well. And that was uh, definitely, a, a, it was eye opening. Great. But they're doing a lot of great things. Yeah. They really are. Super. Excellent. Uh, they're doing a lot with very little. <laughs> yeah, yep. they definitely are. Definitely doing mm -hmm. that. And then I also want to say Blacksburg Middle School they had a great drama production. It was really super. And I'm sorry that I'm miss, gonna have to miss a lot of other schools' programs, but it's great what we're doing in our school system. I'm really proud of us. Board members, you see the uh, agenda preparation for the next meeting. We'll be back here next week on Thursday the 25th. I believe that's the correct date. Yeah. Seven o'clock for a budget workshop. And then closely after that on Monday, April the 20th, uh, April, Monday, April the 29th, we will have our public hearing. And with that, I ask for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify, say aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you. Motion carries.